What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another financial graphing uh, tutorial and where we left off, let me go ahead and just bring it up. Um, we're plotting this uh, Tesla stock price as we can see. Um, you know, this data kind of needs to be aligned differently. This is pretty ugly. Um, and I think we mentioned last time we don't need any of this data here for volume. We would want to move this up a little bit. But um, the main thing we want to do is kind of make this chart look like the conventional stock price and volume chart where the volume chart is maybe like a third of this size here and then this you know takes up that extra space now with how we have this set up that's not really possible because um, when you do these subplots it is it makes like these dimensions right but you can't have a plot take up more than uh, the space that you say it can, I guess. I'm trying to think of how I would say that. But like what you could do, theoretically, right, like you could say this is a two by one and this takes, you know, the first spot and this could be like a four by one and the, oops, a four by one and this takes spot one and you could get kind of close to what you want. Oops, sorry, this takes spot four. Two by one, let's see. Right. So you get this, but really, I mean, you've got all this wasted space. And you'd be like, well, wait a minute, we could play with the headspace, right? Well, that's not going to help very much because even at zero, that's where we stand. So what do we, you know, what can we do? Well, have no fear. Um, what we're going to do is actually move off of sub, well, at least this way of defining subplots and uh, start defining subplots a different way. Now, the, what we're going to do now is instead of just straight up subplot, we're going to do subplot to grid. And what this is going to allow us to do is specify a grid and then specify the, um, well, basically specify the dimensions of the grid followed by the starting point of this object followed by the size of the object. So if that sounds confusing, don't worry. We're going to go through it step by step. So. Here's our parameters. Now the first parameter is the grid size. It's going to be a four by four grid. And what we're going to end up wanting to do is it's going to be a four by four grid. The um, stock price will take up four by three of that. And the, um, or rather a three by four, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm still bouncing that around in my head. <laughs> anyway, and you want it, you know, the, the stock price is going to take up basically 75% and then the, um, the volume will take up 25%. So it's going to be a four by four grid. The starting point of this graph will be zero, zero. It's like right in the top uh, left corner. Uh, the size of this row span will be three and the column span so it'll go like three rows down, and then the column span, you know, over to the right, basically, will be four. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is kind of do the same thing down here uh, with AX2. Um, let's see. So, again, we'll get rid of this here, subplot to grid. And, again, we're dealing with a four by four grid. We already know that. This starting point will be three, so like down three and uh, over zero. And then we want to still have our share at, uh, share x axis with ax1. Then we want our row span to be equal to one, and we want our column span to be, uh, you know, it goes over four, basically. So let's save that and see what we're, what we're working with at the moment. There we go. So looking a little better, right? Like this is kind of small enough. Um, still got this data issue, still got the volume stuff. But I mean, as far as like, you know, the fundamental part of this uh, thing, it's looking pretty good. And if we uh, move headspace, we can see that sure enough, we can actually connect this now. Um, and I might even say, instead of a four by four, we could do like a, uh, a four by five maybe and have the row span be four by four, four by five, start 
start this at four maybe. Let's try something like that. Um, run that. Oh, um, whoops, sorry. It's actually a uh, make it a five by four. Save that, run it, and there we go. So even even smaller, and that's probably more uh, more closely tied to what you're used to seeing as far as dimensions are concerned. So then what we want to do is edit the headspace. Now the other thing that we notice is we got okay. Well, I've I've said it already, but we've got the date, the volume um, that we want to move, and the bottom. So let's start working on that stuff and get the rest of this fixed up. Um, so let's see. The first thing that we should do is let's get rid of the date stuff for AX1. The way that we're going to do that, there's a couple of different ways that you can do things to get rid of stuff without actually getting rid of them. You can do like something like AX1 axes uh, dot y axes dot set underscore visible um, and then set it to false. And what that'll do is just make it disappear. But since we're sharing the axis, that's not going to work. So uh, when that doesn't work, the other thing that people will do sometimes is instead of set visible, uh, you do set underscore tick labels, and then you just specify an empty array. But what that's going to do is actually disappear the, um, well, let's see. I'll show it to you. Um, Oh, whoops. Let's see, what did we do? We did Y. Let's do X axes. Okay. Plot that. And the problem with this is, yes, it did indeed disappear uh, that data, but it also got rid of it for this data, right? So that's not good enough either. And so a little known or a lesser known trick um, to use whenever you're uh, sharing the axis is to, we'll get rid of this. And instead, we use this uh, set p or setup function or whatever it is, plot set p. And what we want to do is ax1 uh, uh, period get underscore x tick labels empty params, and then visible equals false. It's kind of a hacky way to go around it. You can also do it with a for loop, uh, but this is a little cleaner single line function. So now when we Scoot, uh, scoot this over, we can see that we've got our dates here, volume here, and we've got like, you know, our, our information down here is in date format. No dates here. Awesome. So now we've got this LE7, which is referring to this volume. So now the next thing we'd want to do is let's get rid of that volume uh, number, which is actually really easy to do. So ax2.axes, and we kind of just covered this, um, yaxes.set underscore tick labels and what we're going to do is just specify an empty array so now this chart comes up and now we are starting to look like a pretty darn clean chart the only things that we have left to do is get rid of the space here we could maybe move this over a little bit maybe move this over a little bit maybe remove some of this space possibly so didn't we already have one of these typed out I thought we already had one typed out I don't know what I do with it I guess we cleared this or something. I can't even remember now, but I guess we'll have to type it out again. So let's go right here. So plot dot subplots underscore adjust. And let's say left equals 0.09. Uh, bottom equals 0.18. Right equals 0.94. Uh, w space equals 0.20 and H space equals uh, 0. Cool. I think that's all. I think we're all set now. So let's save that. Let's run it. See what we get. Pretty tight fit. We. Uh, I guess we could. Let's see. Oh, top. I guess we can move top a little bit. Oh, we didn't even specify uh, top here. Um, let's just tr uh, mess with it right now and see what we get. Um, as far as what we want to make the top, probably something like 94, I would, I guess. 95 or 94, I guess. we'll do 94 just to be safe. Um, the rest of this looks pretty darn good. So let's just make uh, top equals point. Save it. 
Oops, what do we do? Oh, no comma. Save, run that, and okay. So now we have a pretty respectable looking chart. And one thing that you can do is you can go to save figure and you can like actually save this figure. And so now when we close out of this, let's bring up that figure. Um, here it is. Now you can see that it actually saves, you know, our figure, and you can, you know, send it to somebody or, or whatever you wanted to do with it. Um, so that's pretty cool. So like I was saying, there's, you know, pretty much an endless amount of things that you can do uh, as far as like customization is concerned. You can change every font, every color. Um, we can make this a candlestick chart. I will probably probably the next video. We will uh, cover turning this into a candlestick chart, since that's how everyone seems to like to view their uh, stock prices. Um, so I think we'll do that. Uh, the other things that we're going to be doing in the future videos is moving averages for sure. We'll probably throw in some RSI and some MACD into this, um, you know, and put those on this as well and generate a figure with that stuff. So anyway, it's going to be pretty interesting. I think the only thing, it might be a little bit until I put those out, the candlestick charts probably come pretty quick. But the other ones might not. And the only thing I would like to change immediately, I think I'll just add that to the end of this video, is like all this text is just way too big in my opinion, like when you go to render the, the image. So um, there's a quick way to make all this text nice and small. So let's go ahead and change the font size of this and then we'll conclude uh, this video. I'll close out of here and minimize this. Come back and go to the very, very top of your file right underneath import. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to change the um, parameters of matplotlib. There's like a whole parameters file. You can go in there by hand and edit it, or you can do like momentary edits, which is probably the better solution. So uh, the way that we're going to do this is matplotlib.rc, uh, capital P, params, dot update, and then parentheses, and then little curly braces. And inside the curly braces, font period size, um, close the uh, quotes, colon, then you can specify the font size. I happen to prefer more of a nine. And one last thing that you can do is if you come down here, you can do plot show, and then uh, instead of like having to actually click on uh, save the figure or whatever, you can just do uh, fig, which corresponds to this figure we set up like way up here long ago. Fig dot save fit. Or actually, I don't think it's camel case. Save fig, and then in here you can specify where you want to save it. So here I'll just say example dot uh, png, and I'm not sure why that just got thrown. I don't really know. If you ever see this error, um, oh my goodness, I hate Windows Shake so much. <laughs> anyway, if you uh, if you ever see this error, um, and you'll hit OK, and then it'll tell you like Python crash too. Yeah. Um, usually, like if you're working with uh, graphing stuff with Matplotlib, and you like screw up, uh, and you throw an error, like while you're doing some plotting, you'll always get this error. Like, and sometimes it takes a while to come up, but that's all it is. It's nothing to worry about if you see it. If you deal with matplotlib enough and you have, I don't know, maybe it's just my operating system or something, but don't worry about it. You'll get used to seeing the heck out of that thing. So anyways, let's do this one last time. Um, uh, tell me matplot, okay. So import matplotlib, I guess, right before, even though we did all that. But anyway, okay, so up comes the graph. And, and I realize that like, when you're looking at it, maybe now, they, they, they might look too small to you. But when you close out of this, it'll automatically do the save figure. So you didn't have to do that. And then when we come over here and we open up example, I don't know. I just, I think that size, and I don't even think it's full. Yeah, like, um, that wasn't even a full size. I can't even fit the full size because it's a little bigger um, in, uh, like it comes out a little bigger than that, like s the sample that it gives you through Python. But anyway, yeah, I mean, this is, a, uh, in my opinion, nine, if you're going to save it to an image, uh, a font size of nine is preferable. Anyway, um, that's that. Um, the only thing I might change about this, uh, graph here is, oops, 
maybe adding more ticks to it, you know, you, but you can do all that stuff that you want. So anyway, um, I think that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, like I said, we'll be doing uh, probably some candlestick in the next one. And then later on, the RSI, MACD, and all that. So um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying this series. Hopefully I've taught you all some uh, good skills that you can start doing your own analysis instead of relying on someone else's program. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your, all your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.